Welcome to Southland Marahiku in New Zealand's Deep South, a region renowned for its unmatched beauty. This week it provides a natural playground for New Zealand's best road cyclists in the 67th edition of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Over seven days we will see all the South has to offer, starting and finishing in Invercargill, a city transforming for the future. Through fertile farmland, the rugged south coast, the beauty of Fiordland and the majestic remarkables in Queenstown. All to push the country's top road cyclists to their absolute limit. 114 riders, 19 teams, over 860 kilometres and just one winner. This is the 2023 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Southland Sunshine again greeted the riders on Tuesday for the Stage 3 start from the seaside township of Riverton. The move of the day came just out of Tuatapuri, an hour into the day's racing, where Australian Max Campbell broke free from the peloton and was quickly joined by his compatriot Marcus Cooley. The two international riders steadily built their lead to nearly seven minutes as the breakaway climbed over Blackmount Hill. But that's when the peloton got to work, reeling in the leading duo and setting up another bunch sprint along the TNL lakefront. Cambridge's Zach Patterson took the stage win, with tour leader Regan Goff close behind in third. Enough for him to stay in orange, heading into the tour's Queen stage finish up the Remarkables in Queenstown. Uh, Ryan at Advanced Personnel, he's a, he's a customer in our store at home and um, he popped into the store eight months ago, he knew I wasn't in a particularly good place for cycling and, and said what gets you out of bed in the morning, what's your favourite race and naturally I said Tour of Southland and he said well what would it take me to get you down here and uh, I said well, well I want to go and race the Tour with my mates so he took it to his board of directors and they approved it and here we all are. It's been fun, but geez, I've been nervous about it all. You know, like you um, obviously we've got a whole lot of these young bike riders that we want to look after. So yeah, you do um, think about that. But no, it's been great so far. The weather's been fantastic, so that's made it an easy sort of start. Minimal wind. It's sort of hard to really have the stronger teams come out and show their like striking force, uh, but. I think there's a bit of weather forecast for later in the week, so hopefully we get some of that real Southland weather and uh, get to have a dig later on. Back, you know, sort of in my heyday, you could win this race on strength as opposed to speed, I think. You know, smaller fields and, yeah, it's just fast. It's so fast. You know, I got dropped yesterday not long out of Tuatapri and looked at the average on my computer and it was 47 over all those hills. You know, we're, we were hauling. Going up the Remarkables, it truly is like a 10% gradient, it really pinches up on those riders and where we go to on the hill, yeah, it certainly reflects what we'd like to see, like a European climb, so those kids can um, obviously get the data from that ride, if they have a really good one, they can send it off to some team in Europe and they'll get some interest I'm sure, yeah. The racing's really tight and yeah, today's going to be the day that um, those guys that have prepared super well are going to come out and play. I mean thinking of Boris Clark and Ben Oliver, like he's like a caged tiger, Ben, he can't wait to have a real good crack, so it's going to be good to see, yeah. Yeah, everyone's been waiting around for a bit, the wind isn't playing ball just yet, so hopefully that shows up later in the week, but we've got a nice wee mountain to climb today. Oh, there's a few good guys, it's actually, um, this year it's quite an even field for sure, it's, and compared to the last few years maybe, and there's, I think every team has a, has a card to play today, for sure. Yeah, no, I think we've got a couple of guys that can climb pretty well. Uh, we'll definitely try and be in the mix if there's any splits or moves that go and um, yeah, try our best up the climb and see how we go. We have arrived at the point of the race, the queen stage of this year's tour, the one that has been talked up all week long, where the big hitters are going to make their moves for the general classification. Yeah, this stage certainly provides the biggest test in this year's SPS Bank Tour so far. It is not all done after this race. There are plenty of opportunities as the tour goes on. This stage is such a tough stage though, getting up through that lake and through Athol and on the way through to Garson, it can blow up and be very windy. Once you hit that lake and you get around there, if you're in a breakaway, it's hard to pull them back. And then of course you get to the end and then you've got to face that remarkable hill climb. 
Yes, 6k of climbing at the end of today and it's quite a different climb to anything they've experienced so far. When we get closer to that it will look certainly like going up around the Alps in Europe as we see the man in the green jersey, Kirkazu, on the front early on as they roll out of Mosburn here for the traditional fast start but it's the on your bike riders putting two of their riders to the very front here and trying to stir things up. Good to see these guys out in the front. Yeah, it is a great uh, concept, the on your bike 1.5 metre uh, setup. Adia Craig has really been a driving force behind this team for a number of years. It's great to see these guys out having a go and going off the front. No reaction at this stage, of course, early days, but there's going to be some fireworks, I think, on this one. So the two boys from On Your Bike 1.5 metres have now going to be joined by three other riders here. Business South in the mix once again, getting themselves towards the front in the pink colours. Rush, Rush Vallow Ridley in the red colours. Looks like Hunter Goff, who's joined onto the front here to make a group of five riders. It still is very early days in the stage. You can see here this group that was away are just starting to get reeled in. That looks like one of the Sea Brown builders, Olfit, contracting riders here at the front, still trying to drive this breakaway. They've had a really good tour this year, and Daryl Olfit will be stoked. His 11 year sponsorship of this team really has come good this year. So it's great to see these guys, but the Peloton is just not letting anything go. No, they're keeping a very close eye on things there as we saw one or two new faces appear to the front. And as we say that, there is another group of new riders now hitting off to the front here. And it looks like the face there of Elliot Crowther in the multiple colours who rides for the Quality Foods Southlands team there. He's slotting into third place. We've got Kian Watts, a former New Zealand representative on the left there in the PowerNet team. They are a team with a lot of strong contenders. This is a good move by them. Kane Richards also up in the mix there. A man last year, Doug, who was away for this stage as well. He'd be a solid man to have out in front there. There's a bit of experience in this group, all right, Julian. You can see there the young lad, number 46, Kane Richards from Australia from the Koopmans Booth Logistics. He's a big, strong boy. These are the sort of guys you want to get away and breakaways with. Matt Zinovich, we've seen his ex expression out on the road before. He's had a quiet one, like we said, up to now. But Zeno might be holding something in the uh, back pocket for the Share the Road Macaulay Ford team. So this lead group of four about to turn left onto State Highway 6 here at Five Rivers. Always great supporters here as they make their way round. They are continuing to open up a gap very quickly and so early here in the stage. At 3 minutes 22 was such a time gap that puts Kane Richards as the virtual leader on the road. And absolutely no reaction here, Doug. The group here have decided to let them go, but of course it's very early in the stage very early in the stage but in the back of the minds of the riders in this group is the fact that it is only 102 kilometres this stage so a big gap uh, as you would see it there's young Tom Kerr coming up the front of the, the bunch to stir things along a bit from the Sea Brown Builders Olfit contracting squad Tommy's enjoying his tour he's having a ball learning a lot I'm sure but at this stage of the race we say it's early days Things get out too far. There's a Jolly's Hill climb. We've got to go over here with this lead quartet of riders. This could really threaten the overall lead of the race if this blows out. We've seen it time and time again when it comes to tours, and in particular the SBS Bank Tour of South, and with a peloton have the calculators out. They seem to know how far to allow a group to get away. But of course, without the wins here today, once again, they're going to have to factor that into it. And it also comes down to what type of teams wish to do the work on the front. There'll be those who are the passengers. And we've seen that over the last few days and those who are willing to do the work. So these guys are rolling the dice. Rolling the dice is for sure. And the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And in some cases, we've seen SBS Bank tours won and lost in stages like this where guys get a big buffer and then spend the next few remaining days trying to defend their lead. The peloton now are starting to sense a wee bit of danger. The creation signs might accuse squad there are starting to get organised. But we still have a lot of road left and we still have a climb on our hands once we get round the lake. So this stage really is shaping up to be a doozy.
Yes, they're well stretched out here, but you're right, there's just the one or two teams in the mix here towards the front, keeping an eye on things, trying to get it at a good steady pace. It looks, at, looks like the likes of uh, Sam Ritchie leading the team here, trying to drive things along. As I said, they've got to calculate things to perfection. There is a large hill at the end of it all here, but they don't want to give away too much of a gap going into the base of it as we make our way towards Kingston and ultimately around that devil staircase. Yeah, the leaders have really, really organised themselves. These guys are experienced bike riders, of course. And uh, Kane Richards here from the Kooplands Booth Logistics. He's having a ball. He's rolling along nicely in this group. They're trundling along well. An outstanding shot there as they drop down into Kingston, the Peloton. Well over four minutes in deficit of the leading group of four. And there we have it, Doug. What a beautiful shot of the devil staircase here today as they make their way around towards the Remarkables. You could not get, I believe, any better place to ride a bicycle in New Zealand. This is picturesque. And on a day like today, where the, the lake is mirror calm, you just are in a paradise. This is where things get tricky. The breakaway like this around the lake, as we have, can become out of sight, out of mind. All of a sudden, we've had some big long straights where the riders have probably been able to catch glimpses of things in the in the distance from the peloton. These guys are now escaping and are on their own. Yeah, absolutely right. The twisting and the turning as, we, turning as we saw in that shot there makes life very difficult for this group here to actually sight them. And of course. When out of sight, and that there, the old mentality can change in the bunch. They're looking to hear from the officials. They're looking to know what's going on, what is the gap here to make their decisions. But you can see the time gap continues to hold very well for that lead group of four as they enter into this early stage, the Devil's Staircase. And here we are now, just at the start of the base of the Remarkables climb. We have lost the rider. Matt Zinovich from the Share the Road Macaulay Ford team has been drift or has drifted off this front trio here. And this is where things really start getting down to the business end. Yes, as you look at the GC standings for all three of these riders, Doug, if they were to hold off the chasing peloton, we could see them move dramatically up on the overall GC. In particular, of course, Richards. As we've already mentioned, he's only mere seconds off it. And that's the difference this year, I think, coming into this particular stage. It is only mere seconds that could define who could be leading in a whole host of the different classifications. And you can see the weight of responsibility on Kane Richards' shoulders here. He is leading that break up this climb. Back in the peloton, though, the gap is now down to 3 minutes 23. And Christian Rush from the Rush Fellow Ridley squad is driving this. Looks like young Hunter Goff there on the front as well, contributing as they head down to the base of this climb. But these guys here back at the front of the race, Kane Richards is really setting himself a nice tempo and he's well in control of things at this stage. Yes, these three are looking in control, so much so I would suggest, looking back at that peloton, Doug, we haven't seen a mixture of teams trying to combine and actually make a concerted effort to chase these guys down, giving these guys an even bigger opportunity to potentially take out the stage. There's definitely tactics involved, sending three chaps up the road like these squads have, the uh, Kooplands Booth Logistics, uh, Quality Foods sending Elliot Crowther up, uh, and the PowerNet uh, team sending uh, Kian Watts up. They've set it up so that they could get the other teams to chase. I don't think their uh, strategy has worked. And I think they might have underestimated the strength of this front trio. Things are really starting to get a bit dire here now and there's panic stations coming from the peloton. Meanwhile, looking cool, calm and collected are the three leaders on the road. Kane Richards, as we saw him last year, bring his teammates into the base of the hill, is powering up this particular climb. Elliot Crowther, he's just chewing the lip a little bit there. Kian Watts tucked in behind him. All three of these guys have got a serious chance as they have a bit of a look down the hill. Of course, that's the advantage too. The higher they get, the way we have the switchbacks, you can actually spot where the chases are. So the big hitters have all got to the front of the peloton. You've got the young boy Oliver from the Creation Signs Motor Cube, Boris Clark uh, up the front there as well. And we've got some of the other teams from Oxford Edge starting to move their way up to minimise this gap.
Meanwhile, our three leaders, the faces are starting to change as they make their way up. This is 6K of climbing, over 10% and a lot of it dug here. This will be sucking out the energy of those legs as they make every pedal stroke. Yeah, you can see it all right, Julian. You can see Kane Richards having a wee bit of a look around, looking up towards the switchbacks as to what he's got ahead of him. Elliot Crowther in behind there holding his wheel. There's a bit of a jam going on, and that's enough for uh, Kian Watts from the PowerNet team to say, that's my day. Remembering these guys have been away in this breakaway for a number of kilometres around the lake and before they've hit the climb. Elliot Crowther is doing everything he can to stay on the back wheel of this immense power that's in front of him. Uh, Kane Richards from Australia for the Kooplands Booth Logistics team. This is really getting really tough for these guys. Yes, it's getting very challenging for these riders as they deal to each of the switchbacks there. Watts is drifting back as we saw. That's the end of his day here, as it is for a number of other riders in this particular shot. We can see them drifting off to what is left of the chases here. And it is the team from the Quality Food Southland who have put themselves onto the front here and are trying to shut down things. But you can see some of the teammates there from Copeland's Booth Logistics also placing themselves towards the front. Tactically, slowing things down. They're not going to come through to the front. They know they've got Richards up the road and potentially could be putting himself well up in the GC. Yeah, some absolute textbook riding here from some of these races. Boris Clark is doing everything he can to set a tempo as fast as he can. Meanwhile, out at the front here, Elliot Crowther from Quality Foods is just hanging on by a thread. Kane Richards has really put him under the pressure around some of these switchbacks, which do have a bit more of a gradient. But Elliot Crowther here, remember, Remembering he's riding in the over 35 section, he is having the ride of his life. Here he is attacking. What an incredible, incredible effort here from Elliot Crowther, the former Southland rider. Unbelievable. I would suggest we might have had a poker face on there for a lot of this stage here, Doug. He's waited patiently here and has now decided to give it a wee bit of a kick. And he very quickly opens up a substantial sort of a gap there on his opposition. Now it's about whether the body will react the way he wants it to. Because it often can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things after being on relatively flat terrain early on in the stage here. To all of a sudden this ramping up and you can see the gritting of the teeth here. And no wonder this is a very challenging stage indeed this final part of it. As we see one of the riders here from Oxford Edge. There's a man that's come all the way from France here contesting this year's uh, tour. We've got a number of other riders also trying to get themselves into the mix in this leading group as it looks like Gardner. That's Dan Gardner, the man there in the blue colours. Now, Doug, last year he took out the bluff stage, so this guy knows how to climb here, and he's starting to rev up the cadence. Yeah, we're really whittling down now to the contenders. Dan Gardner from the PRV Pista Corsa team has attacked this front group. Boris Clark straight onto his wheel from the QFS uh, team, and the Frenchman, like you were saying, Arthur Mayer from the Oxford Edge team, Hayden Ralston, of course, director sportif, well drilled, but out in front, it's all Alex Elliot Crowther from Quality Food Solutions. Cam St Scott, the director sportif, will be just relishing this. He's got a rider in front, a rider trying to win the race. But at the moment, Elliot Crowther, the former Southlander, who has had some time off the bicycle, believe it or not, 10 years, has come back with a vengeance. This man has really done some prep coming into this year's SBS Bank Tour. Yes, he got a bit of experience of this particular climb last year. And now this year, he's going to try and take it as he moves his way off the front. But as does the man for the Oxford Edge Mayor. He winds it up there. He's pushing a relatively large gear in comparison to his counterpart, who's slowly but surely trying to wind him back in. You can see these guys, Doug, they go through different stages within the actual climb itself, where the body reacts positively, and also a lot of times where it goes downhill. In contrast, I believe Elliot Crowther really has metered his energy out well. You can see now the look on that face. This is really starting to hurt. Elliot Crowther's been in this position before. He is a champion bike racer as a young guy, but he is really making every post a winner here. But these chases, they're on his tail. Whether he's going to stay away and win, hard to know. At this speed from the chasing group, I don't think so. Mayer and Gardner having their own battle on the road. Of course, they are sitting a third and fourth here on the road, I would suggest here, as they start to wind things on up. And it's Gardner trying to offload the man from Oxford Edge. So these great races going on within the race here as they make their way up this very steep climb. And we can see now riders being spread all over the mountainside here. Crowther, though, he's in the prime position at the very pointy end of the race. Yeah, he is starting to realise that this could become a reality. His 
his dream of winning a stage in this race has been something he's always had as a kid. He followed it along, of course, as a young Southland boy, as you do. But Elliot Crowther is, is less than a kilometre away now from a stage victory in this year's SBS Bank Tour, the Queen stage. What an, incre an incredible ride here from this young man. It absolutely is. The former junior real champion, former under-23 road champion, as you said, Doug, come back into the fold in, this in the last couple of years to make his way back from Seattle in the United States to take on the 67th edition, and he's on his way to victory. Meanwhile, a battle continues back here as they pick up the remnants of the uh, lead group there with Kian Watts making his way backwards through into the peloton, or what is left of those guys there. But more importantly, Crowther raises his hand in victory here to take out this year's Queen Stage in the 67th edition of the SBS Bank Tour of South. And what an outstanding effort from the young man here to take out what is considered to be one of the toughest stages in the tour. You can just see how much this stage win means to Elliot Crowther. Fantastic. Meanwhile, Kane Richards across the line and looking at the gaps here, Doug, this could be the man that's going to move into the overall tour lead here as Gardner makes his way across. He'll also be moving well up here as a number of these riders have given absolute death here and the bodies are reacting the way you would expect if they've left it out on the roads of Southland. Australian Kane Richards rolled the dice today and has now placed himself into the orange jersey by 18 seconds over Gardner and the Frenchman Mayer in 29 seconds. Joe Cooper moving into the top five, followed by Boris Clark. No change to speak of in the Harcourt sprint ace with Kirkazoo continuing to lead with a three-point advantage over Campbell. A sensational day for Elliot Crowther with a stage victory and moving to the top of the leaderboard in the Jesco King of the Mountains. Young Nate Pringle of Canterbury moves himself into the under-23 category lead over Feint and Kirkman. While Joe Cooper now pushes himself into the silver jersey by 42 seconds over Crowther and Glenn Hayden. Kane Richards, after a big day out in front, is awarded the most combative for McClay Jewellers. While Quality Foods Southland continue to lead in the Wednesday's team classification over Transport Engineering Southland Deep South and Oxford Edge. Elliot Crowler, Quality Foods Southlands. I grew up down here and so to um, come back and do the race now after being away from cycling for 10 years and uh, I, I never won a stage when I did the tour all those times and so to, to do that now it's, it's really special. Oh, it's a massive honour to wear the jersey. Like, there's uh, not many Aussies have won it or worn it, so really happy to be one of the one of the few. Good day for us, I think. Uh, we managed to get in the breakaway. Uh, had a good, strong group. We worked well together uh, all the way up until the climb, pretty much. Uh, the boys started to get a little bit cagey towards the end, but it's always hard to tell if they're playing games or just running out of steam. So. Uh, Unfortunately for me, Elliot was playing games and he got the better of him in the end. But uh, yeah, really happy to take the leader's jersey for the tour and see how we go for the rest of the week. <laughs> Not bad. Follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at tourofsouthland.com.